over the past few weeks of dissecting the lore and history behind my favorite personas, I've always found more and more reasons to love them. Each week I do a compendium video, I feel more informed and interested in the persona I'm researching. However, about a month ago, I looked into Samire's Sandrion. While I found a lot of really cool stuff and looked into some fascinating history, it left me with a somewhat uneasy feeling. At first, I couldn't really nail down what was bothering me about the video. But the more I thought about it, the more I felt that something was just off about the connection between the story of Cinderella and Samire's arc in Royale. At first I thought maybe I was just being silly, so I decided that I was going to take a closer look at things one more time with a much more critical eye to see if my concerns were to be validated or if I was just off base. And as much as I hate to admit it, it seems that my gut feeling was spot on. Now I want to preface this video by saying that this is largely a matter of opinion and how you read a story. So to get into things, let's begin by defining what reading really is. Now obviously when I say reading a story, I'm not referring to the act of looking at words and understanding them, but rather I mean how one's personal experiences and thoughts allow them to interact with any text, be it a game, movie, book, or otherwise. So let's look at an example. Our sin is Joker's persona. That is more or less all the game says about him. However, we as viewers can see that our sin is meant to represent the gentleman thief archetype, even though the game doesn't outright say it. This conclusion is our reading of the character, and this concept applies to all stories, themes, subtexts, and any other symbol that can hold meaning. Okay, I hope I haven't lost anybody with that terminology lesson, but with this as our basis, we can get into the problems I have with Sandrion and how her story reads when consumed from the perspective of a general audience member. So, what is it exactly that I dislike about Sandrion for Sumire? Well, this is a complicated question with a complicated answer. First, we need to understand that personas are picked with intent. Joker is given Arsene because he's meant to be a gentleman thief. Ryuji is given Captain Kid because he represents a youthful rebellious spirit, much like Ryuji. We find these readings of Joker and Ryuji by taking the inspiration for their personas and applying it to their arcs in the game. When we apply the story of our sin to Joker, a lot of things line up really nicely, and the general messages associated with our sin line up with Joker's story arc. This is a great example of a well-chosen persona. However, I find the core themes of Cinderella to be almost incompatible with Sumire's character arc and growth. To get a feel for what I mean, we need to take a look at some of the core messages in the story of Cinderella. The classic fairy tale is commonly associated with kindness, forgiveness, and luck changing one's circumstances. These themes are great for a folktale, but I don't find them to be particularly relevant to Sumire's continued struggle for survival and constant bouts with depression and guilt. To me, Sumire's tale is one of personal strength and self-discovery, themes that are incompatible with the ones listed for Cinderella. Watching her come to terms with her true identity and slowly pull herself out of her depression and guilt was extremely compelling, but reading her tale the same way that we would read Cinderella would raise some serious concerns concerns. In Cinderella, Ella's problems are largely external. Namely, these problems are the mistreatment that she faces at the hands of her wicked stepfamily. But by reducing Sumire's personal struggles and mental health issues to be equivalent to evil stepsisters is incredibly dismissive of their importance. Survivor's guilt and depression are extremely delicate and sensitive topics that require nuanced care and compassion to discuss, and Sumire's triumph over these challenges defines her arc in the game. So, to relate her mental health struggles to the challenges that Ella faces is perhaps reductive and maybe a bit annoying, but it gets even worse when we look a little closer and start to see the similarities that Joker has with the Prince. For context, in Cinderella, Ella's encounter with the Prince is brought on through happenstance and good luck. She is lucky to meet a fairy godmother, and from there is introduced to the Prince, who will go on to rescue her from her wicked stepfamily. The story gives very little agency to Ella during this period, as mostly things are just happening to her. Now, this is no problem in a vacuum, as there's nothing inherently wrong with this kind of story. The issue here is that now we have two competing narratives between Sumire and her persona. 
First, we have Sumire's very personal and inspiring tale of self-discovery, mental health, and overcoming guilt, but that is juxtaposed with Cinderella's tale of someone in a bad situation saved by happenstance and a prince. Now, if we want to go really off the rails with this reading, we can say that not only is Sandrion reductive to Samiri's character development, but it's also counterproductive to the overall progressive themes that are core to Persona 5 as a whole. By itself, Cinderella's story is by no means problematic. I'm not here to say that it's sexist or anything like that. However, when applied to Samire, the frivolous nature of the tale becomes extremely damaging to her because it asserts that the only reason she was able to get over her problems was that Joker showed up and saved her. We can come to this conclusion because the connections that do exist between Sumire's story and Cinderella lead us to this. By examining the role that Joker plays in Sumire's arc, most viewers are likely able to see some connections between him and the prince from Cinderella. Looking at the text, however, in this case Persona 5, we can find that this interpretation is blatantly incorrect as the game shows us Sumire dealing with her mental health issues on her own. She does receive help from Joker and the Phantom Thieves like anyone would from their friends. However, the game is clear that she clawed herself out of that pit and did so through hard work and resolve. In comparison, Ella does very little emotional work to resolve her situation. Instead, Prince Charming shows up with the glass slipper that her fairy godmother gave her and takes her away from the evil step family, resolving all conflict with little trouble. Applying Cinderella's tale to Sumire discounts all of the hard work that she put into herself and leaves all of the glory not just to Joker, but to her distinctly male knight in shining armor. Now I doubt you need me to tell you why that's an issue, but in case you do, the implication that Sumire was cured of her mental health troubles because a man came along and saved her takes away all of the agency that she had in her own arc and implies that without Joker, she is helpless. Now that I've made my concerns more clear, I want to address something. I don't believe that the choice to make Sandrion Sumire's persona was done with sexist intent, but rather I think it's an unfortunate consequence of a not so great fit between persona and owner. Intent is important to remember, and I don't see sexist intent here. However, no matter the intentions, the fact remains that if we are to apply the story of Cinderella to Sumire as we would the story of Captain Kid to Ryuji, we're left with a really bad reading of her art. And that is the true crux of this video. It is a massive shame that Sandrion's symbolism detracts from Sumire's development, because when you detach Sumire from the tale of Cinderella, you're left with an extremely touching and compelling arc about personal development, growth, and moving on that really speaks to her ability as a person to overcome hardship. I don't think it's likely that Sandrion was picked with the intent to take away from Sumire. But unfortunately, at least for me, it really does in a substantial way. Now obviously there is nothing wrong with liking Sandrion. I think that Sandrion is a really cool persona for how unique it is. I think it has a killer design and some great lines. I love the connections between it and Joker's Arsene as it's a non-reductive way of showing how inspirational Joker was to Sumire without robbing her of any credit. I also love the role that it fills gameplay-wise. Having a party member other than Joker dedicated to Bless skills is really cool and works well with Akechi while he has Loki and Hera work. And I include all of this praise to convey the message that despite the negative implications that come with Sandrion, I still really like it as a persona. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. The reason I'm so critical, though, is not to cancel Sandrion, but rather it is to lament what could have been. Time and time again, Persona 5 has given us amazing thematic personas that fit perfectly with their owner, but I just don't see the same level of connection between Sumire and Sandrion. Don't get me wrong, of course there are connections, and the ones that are there that aren't actively harmful to her development are really cool. I love how Maruki is a dark twist on her fairy godmother, and how Joker represents the prince in a kind of hands-off manner. If you'd like to learn more about those good connections, I highly recommend you check out my Persona compendium on Sandrion, 
as I discuss all of the things that make it a great persona in detail there. To be clear, I think that the reductive reading of Sondrion's story applied to Sumire was never the intent of the developers. I think they were trying to connect Sumire's kind-hearted nature to Cinderella and draw parallels that way, but that connection is somewhat surface level compared to almost every other persona in the main party. The connections Sumire has with Cinderella are simply not as in-depth as the connections shared between Akechi and Robin Hood, or Maruki and Azathoth, two of my absolute favorites. And when we try to read into her story as deeply as we do the other characters, it becomes incredibly damaging to her. Because of that, I feel regretful that Sumire wasn't given the same level of thematic depth expressed through her persona, because I genuinely think of her as one of my favorite characters, and I think that she deserves just a little bit better. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I really hope that this isn't the first video of mine that you're watching because usually I like to keep things a bit lighter. But if it is, you may wish to consider hitting the subscribe button so you can see more of my videos every Saturday night. If enough people hit that button, maybe I'll do more serious and critical videos in the future. That said, if you liked this video, feel free to leave me a like. It lets me know I'm doing a good job, it lets YouTube know I'm doing a good job, and it really doesn't cost you anything, which is just great for the both of us. Finally, I also have a Twitter and an Instagram, if those are your thing. Links to both are in the description. But with all that YouTube stuff out of the way, I just want to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.